Hello everybody, this is Detour, back again with another video for the game City of Steam. It's a new free-to-play MMO dungeon crawler game uh, made by R2 and Mechanist. Uh, it's been out about uh, two and a half months now. It's a decent game. Uh, if you, you like free-to-play games, you want to give it a try, give it a try. This is my second video, and I'm going to be explaining the crafting system today. Uh, as I said in my first video, I was going to make a couple in-depth videos to further explain how the, uh, the the features in game works and today I'm gonna make the this video for you for explaining the crafting because it it's a little complicated in some parts uh, as you as you start out so hopefully this will help you you have salvage upgrade salvage add remove mod mod merge smelt transfer and revamp these all of these are not available to you when you first start playing the game. As you level up, uh, I don't remember the exact levels offhand, I'm sorry about that, but as you level up, you it allows you to unlock these. And eventually, I think it's your mid-20s or, or something, that mid to high-20s, you're, you're able to use everything. Now how this works, we'll start off with the basics, we'll start off with salvaging because to, in order to upgrade you need to salvage first so we'll do that so how salvaging works is you have an item that's not an upgrade it's a gray or a white or, or whatever it is blue purple green and it's not better than what you have you have the option of selling it on the broker which can bring you in shillings or you can salvage it for metal and retuners when you salvage it for metals this these metals allow you to upgrade your armor to upgrade the base stats on your armor and the retuners you get allow you to change the rares on these items which I'll show you in a bit about the retuners now as you can see here this is a piece of metal grade 4 metal this resource is required to upgrade equipment of level 26 to 32 depending on the level of the equipment that you salvo here it'll give you certain uh, metal level there's right now in game there's five levels level 1 2 3 4 and 5 and they have a level range on them as you can see here and that's the type of items the level range items that you can use the metal on and when you put the item itself in the upgrade window it's it's going to tell you uh, when you go to upgrade it, it'll tell you what metal it needs see green it'll tell you and those are grade fives it'll tell you the type of metal and the amount and all that that you need so real quick I'll come over here I'm gonna buy just buy a random gray item from the vendor just to show you a salvage Okay, timepiece over here. I'll just buy. I'll just buy some cheap item here, ticker spring. Just to show you what what it would be like if you picked up a junk item in the in the dungeon. So here you, you got all these items down here. As you pick up items, it's going to fill up in the list in here. And then you, what you do is you would right click on it. It puts it in the salvo window. So see, it's a level thirty three gray. Depending on the type, gray, white, green, blue, purple, it increases the amount of metal you have. It also increases the percent here because there is a fail percent when you salvage. Since it's a gray, it's only 40. Uh, and it's a grade 3. If it was a grade, uh, it's a grade 5. If it was a grade 4, I would have a higher percent of grade 3. So the higher grade it is, metal that you're getting from it, the lower percent chance you have of salvaging it uh, successfully and getting the metal. So, yeah, the higher, the higher your level your items are, the harder it is to get the metal itself and then the harder it is to upgrade because there's also a fail percent chance on upgrading and I'll show you that in a minute but here okay let's see 40 percent chance it's a white see it failed so I got nothing out of it if it succeeded I would have got a piece of grade 5 metal now upgrading if that metal succeeded from salvaging all items that I had I would have a, a, a stack of metal and retuners so then I would use that metal over here to upgrade the item. As you see, it's a level 7. If I want to upgrade it to level 8, I'm going to gain plus 11 regen, cost 70 metal per attempt. Here's your shillings cost, and it's a 50% success chance. Catalyst, if I spent 22 catalyst, I can upgrade it to, it would be 100%, but I suggest not leveling your items with catalyst. Use your catalyst for transferring. Uh, and I'll explain that later. Catalyst itself you can buy with Electrum, which is real money, or you can get with Spire Marks. I've personally got a, 
almost all my items max upgraded and I didn't spend any Electrum. I used it all through Spires. Um, as you can see in my first video that I made, I explained uh, how to earn Spire Marks, so you can always give that a look. There's a lot of things, events, PvP, uh, your login bonus, objectives, all that. Uh, each day, you do all that stuff each day and you get Spire Marks. And then you would go up here to the shop, to the Spire Mark section, and you buy Catalyst. And you can use that for crafting needs. So like I said, with upgrading, I suggest that you do not use this below your catalyst on a single upgrade. You're going to go through a lot of metal because the fail chance is going to be there. As you upgrade an item higher, see this is at plus 7, it'll be 50, then it drops to 40, then to 30, then to 25. So you end up failing a lot more and it costs more metal per attempt. But you save your catalyst and I'll tell you that in a bit. Salvaging, I explained that. You got your mods, add remove mod. Pretty simple. It's like gem slots and Drake and saying, or, you know, gem slots in other games. They're locked when you get the item, depending on the color of the item. Uh, see, as purple, purple or better has three mod slots, and I believe greens and blues have two. And then you would choose which ones you want. You use a key. Keys you earn by doing dungeons as drops and opening chests, etc. And then you use a key to unlock a mod slot, and then you can put a mod of that specific type in here. Because it'll tell you, maybe this is a triangle slot, this is a, a pentagon slot, and then you put... The mod in there and as you can see here I got the bonus see the grade 4 grade 4 Pentagon mod and you look down bottom it says armor health 1500 and you can see in my mods on the armor see health 1500 mod merging you, you combine three of the same type and it goes to the next level so if I had three level 1 square mods or tr through level 1 triangle mods Pentagon mods whatever you use three of them, and you combine them here. You click, and if it succeeds, you get it. To, you get one of the next level, and you can keep going up and higher and higher in level with them. But the higher level you go, the chance of success look gets lower. One to two is a hundred. Two to three is eighty. Three to four is sixty percent, and it just keeps dropping. So it gets harder and harder um, to get higher level mods. The good thing about it, though, is you see that there. If you had three, you would have three here, and you say, well, what happens if it fails? Does it take them all? The answer is no. And that's a good thing. If I had three level threes here and it was, it's, you know, 60% or whatever to go from three to four and it failed, it's not going to take all three from me. It'll only take one. So one of them will go bye bye and then the other two go back in my inventory. So you don't lose all of them on a, on a failed upgrade, uh, a failed merge. You only lose one. And again, since I'm here and I'm talking about mods, I might as well explain some stuff about the mod slots and gear. This is just an example of my gear. It's a level 38 purple, as you can see. I've got it upgraded to 7. It's only at 7 because I'm working on a gray, and I'll explain that later, upgrading a gray to max it out. I'll explain that when we get to transfer. And as you can see, my mod slots are resistance, health, and steam. Now, the PvP gear, the event gear, gear you get in dungeons when you pick them up, the mod slots are random. Um, you can't change the mod slots in any way through the crafting system. The rare properties down bottom you can change, and I'll explain that in a bit with uh, revamp. But the mod slots are random. So what a lot of people do is they'll keep grinding dungeons, getting different gear to try to get the mod slots they want, whether it be a lot of health and resistance or steam, or, you know, as you can see on some of my other stuff, you know, health regen to regen your health and mana, you know. Uh, they'll try to get the exact mod slots they want. And then since... Uh, the rares can be changed. They've got the mod slots that they wanted on the gear. They'll use retuners in the revamp and change the rare properties to make it try to make it that perfect item for their build is what they do. And that brings us to... We'll do uh, transferring next since it's it works uh, in the order I'm explaining. Now, you're, you as you can see here, we're talking about how, see, yeah, this is plus 7. It's a purple plus 7. And to upgrade it, it's 70 metal. And it has a 50% fail rate. Or I can use 22 catalyst for, to help up at one level at 100%. It sound, it's, it's a lot. But look at this one. See a difference? This one's plus 7. And it costs 70 metal to bring it to plus 8. Because it's a purple. This one's a gray. 
it's level 15, almost maxed, and it's only 51 metal per attempt. And you can see why people do this is because, look at the, you can see the difference in metal. This one's twice the level as the other one, and it's, it's less metal. And you can see the fail rate here. Once you get above 12, it's going to go past 12, it's only a 20% success chance. <coughs> Excuse me. So, you end up failing a lot. That's why people use grades. You see people upgrading grades because it costs so much less metal. And if you are failing a lot on your upgrades on the gray, uh, you're not blowing through all your metal. And then you're probably wondering, well, why is he upgrading a gray? How does that work? How does he get that upgrade onto his items? Well, that's where transfer comes in. And again, like I was telling you about saving your catalyst instead of doing single upgrades, you save your catalyst for transfer. Because since you're upgrading a gray, you're not going through as much metal uh, as upgrading normal items. So it's not as big of a deal if you keep failing because uh, it costs less. You have a better chance and, and you have more of a chance to upgrade it with more tries because you're, you're using less metal. So you'll save, instead of using your catalyst to upgrade it level by level, you save your catalyst for over here for transfer. Now here's my grays, or it could be your blues, whatever you're transferring from one to the other. You're transferring your stats from one item to another to upgrade just the upgrade level or whether it's because you found a better item and you want to switch your upgrade from your worst base item to your better item uh, you use transfer so here's my gray legs they can be whatever they were blue or and they're plus 15 and you see my legs are seven so you know whether this if, if these I just found them and they had zero it would transfer to a plus 12 it carries over the highest value. So since these are, you know, these are already, er, these were base seven, and this is fifteen. As you can see here, a base transfer without using catalyst carries over eighty percent. So it's going to go from a fifteen to a twelve. And you can see as my plus sevens two eighty nine regen. When they go to plus twelve, they're three sixty one regen. So it's going to it's going to up it from a seven to a twelve using the transfer. But, as I was saying about saving catalysts, I don't have any catalysts on me now, so I can't show you, but if you use 20 catalysts that you can buy through the shop with spire marks that you earn through various ways in the game, this can go to 100%, and you'd carry over your plus 15 or plus 17, whatever it is. That's how people max out their gear. You see people with plus, you know, plus 16 orange items, plus this, and like, how did they get it that hot? How did they get it maxed out? Well, they didn't do it by doing it normally in the window. That's a big big no-no here. You're not going to get your item maxed out anytime soon doing it the normal way. The amount of metal is insane. And the people who made the game know that about this this crafting system and how you use a grade to upgrade it, you know? It's it's not some uh, big conspiracy. It's just a lot of people don't know about it, and the only people that really do it are the veterans. So this is the easier way to upgrade your items is by using this trick upgrading the gray, saving your spire marks, and then transferring it over. That's how you max out your items. If the item's good, don't, you know, if it's a crap item, it doesn't have good mod slots or good rares, or what, don't, you don't have to upgrade it this much. Going to plus six, plus seven is fine. It's when you find those end game perfect items that you want to say, okay, this is like almost perfect item. It's going to be really hard to replace this. Then you max it out using the grays. And even if, so here, here's my ring. You know, it's no big deal. If I here's the ring. If I found a better ring, see this one has mods, crit and impact. If it had crit, crit impact, and, and I didn't want to keep the cooldown, I found a better ring. I can still use transfer. All the metal I spent upgrading this is not gone. I would put the other ring here. You know, I would use catalyst that I had saved spire marks for and bought through the shop for free. I can transfer that plus 16 over to the new ring. So I didn't waste all my time upgrading this one. Now we'll move on to revamping, since it complements, again, the gear. As I was saying about upgrading, okay, I upgraded this... Where's a max item? Here's my gloves. I did the gray item trick like I was explaining. I transferred it over in transfer my gray to my purple here. I used to saved up spire marks from doing my events, doing my dailies and all that. Bought catalyst and I did it transfer. So now you can see max upgrade plus 19 plus 19. It's maxed out. 
but say I didn't like the rare properties down, but I've got impact and crit, but say I had too much movement. I want to have health there, or I want to have triple damage. I want to have impact, crit, attack. How this works is you can change those rare properties. You can't change mod slots, as I said, but you can change rare properties on items. And how that works is it goes back to here. It goes back to salvage. When you salvage an item, if it's a green, a blue, a purple, an orange, you have a chance of getting metal, but you also have a chance of getting what I have here. See a retuner? That's how you change the properties. Retuners are color-based and level-based. So depending on the level, it'll be a specific level range, and it'll be whatever color it is of the item that you salvoed. So like here, it's a 33 to 38, so I probably salvoed a level 34 or 35 purple because it wasn't good. I couldn't sell it on a broker. It wasn't really good. It wouldn't have made any money. And I wanted to get the retuner to change the rares on my armor for better rares, and I wanted the metal. So I salvoed it. It succeeded, and I got a retuner. And it's a 33 to 38 purple. As I said, the retuners are level-based and color-based depending on what you salvoed. get away from that bike because it's loud. I don't want to bother you guys' ears. And that's how you change Route 3 vamp. So you, you salvoed that 33 plus or whatever orange or whatever level range it is and you got the retuner and you want to change the rare properties on an item. So let's say here I've got health impact moving. Give me one second. I'm going to look for something. I'm going to use a retuner. I'm going to try to change it just to show you. Okay, so here's my legs, as you can see. I did, I've salvoed items. I got a retuner uh, that works with this item. It's a level 33 to 38 retuner, purple, and my armors are 38, so the retuner will work. And as you can see on my rears, I have impact, health, and movement down bottom. The health is good. The impact's good, but movement, eh. The boots I have are plus 7. They're event boots. They have a lot of movement speed. Um, if you can see on my other gear, I have a lot of movement, so say, eh, I don't want the movement as a rare. I want to try to get more, more damage on this item. So what you would do is you got your retuner here. Um, don't ignore the catalyst because right now the catalyst doesn't work for it. And this coming soon, this is future stuff. But right now, it just, it, it tells you here, that's the number of retuners it needs. As far as I know, most of it is one. Two-handed weapons. Two-handed weapons use two retuners. But as far as I know, everything else is one. I think there's there might be one other thing that uses two, but I don't have any of it. So I want to try to change... Here we go. I want to try to get that movement off as a rare. So I've got my retuner. It's asking for one. It shows you your base. See, it has now and new. This is what I have on there. Impact, health, movement. I'm going to use a retuner. Ugh, garbage. Not what I wanted. But I took a chance. So, replace old rare properties with new ones. OK or cancel. It took my, it used the retuner. As you can see, here's my old stats and here my new, here's my new ones. Health 26, it's less health. Armor, eh, I'm good on armor. Impact, eh, I don't want, I don't like these. If I did like what I got here, I can click OK and boom. It change, it'll change the, the three rares to these. If you don't like it, instead of hitting OK, you could cancel. It took your one retuner and now you're, you're, stats are back to how they were. It never changed them, but it just, it knocks out the window so you don't accidentally uh, change them. And that's how the retuners work. You can do that with greens, with blues, with purples, with oranges. Although, like I said, to get orange retuners, it's harder because you have to find the orange items and you have to salvo them. And orange items do sell for a nice price on the broker, especially if it's a good one. So you really got to make a choice. When you start doing paragons or, or annex bosses and you find oranges that are not so good or not better than what you have or they don't have good mod slots you say okay do I want to try to sell it for shilling or do I want to salvo it for the retuner and try to get better rare properties on my gear that's really that's 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 how the end game uh, comes down to like with salvoing and getting retuners and trying to get your gear better mod slots comes down to mod slots and it comes down to changing your rares to get the rares you want retuners saving your spire marks uh, for catalysts, for transferring the grays over, uh, 
and all that stuff. And uh, there's one more I didn't cover. I saved it for last because it's the easiest one to explain. Uh, we went over salvaging. We went over upgrading. We went over adding and remove mods and mod merge and how that all works with mods. Uh, we went over transferring and revamping using the retuners. Transferring uh, upgrades over from one item to another. Now I do smelt. This is a basic one. It's really easy. Throughout the game, by doing uh, various stuff in the games, using the transmuter, dro dungeon drops, etc., you get alloy. They're blue bars here. Um, and that's how, as you can see on my weapons, I can't put my weapons here in the window because they're maxed on smelt, but I can show you my item. You see down bottom where it's in blue? That's your smelt. Uh, and you can see I have a bonus 482 to 653 frost damage, Mark 16. Where it says Mark 16, there might be Mark 14, Mark 12. Depending on uh, the item of your level, uh, the level of the item determines how high the smelt can go. So the higher level of the item, the higher you can go on your smelt, um, on your weapon, and the higher damage you can get is how that works. It's level based how high you can get the smelt on it. So how you smelt is you would, you know, you would click. It's going to tell me I can't smelt it because it's max smelted. But you would click on here. It would put it in the window. It's going to give you a price and how many bars it costs to upgrade it to the next level. You would choose your element: sonic, electric, lightning, any of these. I chose frost. So you, you would put the weapon here. Say if you wanted frost, you would hit frost. It'll tell you how many bars and how much shilling. Click accept. Now you can't mix these. You have to stay with the same one. If you go to upgrade it again to level 2 and you choose another one, it's going to knock it off and put it to 1. You want to stack the same one over and over to get it to bring up that mark mark uh, level. Mark 2, mark 3, mark 4 to do more damage. So you, every, anytime you, I wanted to upgrade the smelt on your weapon or your item, um, you would choose it. Make sure you choose it. It'll tell you how many bars you need and you click and you click go and it goes. There's no fail rate here. It's not like when you're uh, salvaging or you're upgrading where there's a, a fail percent. There's no for fail percent. If you got the bars, you can boom, you can raise your smelt. So it's just it's guaranteed bonus damage on your item. Now I'll explain this real quick. You can see there's different ones: fire, light, electric, sonic, ice, necrotic, dark, poison. In PvP, these really don't matter. They all do the same. So no worries about PvP. In PvE, however, um, some monsters are resistant to certain things. Like I believe uh, zombies and like skeletons are, are are resistant to like dark and necrotic and stuff like that. Uh, I think robos are because they're ro ro robots. They're sort of uh, resistant to electric fire. There's different ones. It depends. You know what happens, and if they're resistant, they're going to take less smelt damage. I think there are some that immune that if you have if they're immune to it they take no damage but a lot of things are end up being like they're resistant to it and they'll take only like half smelt damage from your weapon uh, if you're using one that they're resistant to. So it comes down to pretty much just PVE doing dungeons and what kind of monsters you're fighting. The only thing I suggest is a lot of people say eh, about it is try to stick away from using dark damage or necrotic damage smelt because um, like here in Vault. And in later some of the parts of the game, you're going to run into a lot of zombies, a lot of undead, a lot of skeletons and stuff like that, evil people. And a lot of them are resistant to dark and necrotic magic. And some of those grind spots are really good grind spots. So I would suggest staying away from dark or necrotic. If yours, if yours is already there and only at like level 1 or level 2, you can try to restart it with like fire or ice or something because I suggest not using these. Um, the top ones seem to be fire electrical, sonic, and ice. Uh, it seems like gunners like to use fire a lot. Arcanists, which are the mages, like to use the electrical a lot. Channelers like to use sonic, and warders can use whatever. I'm a warder. I use ice, personally. Um, I haven't found that many monsters that are really resistant or immune to ice, so I've been sticking with ice on my weapons. And that's pretty much it. It's just a way. You, you choose your one, you stack it up, and it's free bonus damage on your weapons. And what, <clears throat> so you know, if, if you had, if you had a blue or a purple weapon and you had smelted it up and you find a better one, you don't have to worry about losing your smelt because as I explained with transfer, see down here, aha, remember I was explaining about transfer, you can transfer your upgrade level. When you put weapons in there, it also carries over your smelt. 
So if I had another orange or a, a, a weapon here that was better than this one, but it, I wanted to carry the upgrade over, it'll carry my upgrade over, and it'll carry the smelt. You know, and if I didn't want to lose 80% of this item over to this item, I could use Catalyst that I saved up in the game and then bought with Spire Marks, and I can transfer all this over to my new weapon. So you're not going to lose any of your upgrade. And that's pretty much it. That's a, a pretty decent explanation of the crafting sister. I explained salvaging. I explained why you might see people upgrading gray items in the chat and like why the hell are they upgrading the gray it's because they're trying to max out the uh, upgrade on an item and they're going to use transfer uh, to transfer it over inspire marks to to, to do 100% transfer um, you know I explained about how to change the, ra the rares on your item using retuners which is a main part the main part is like at endgame use getting retuners and changing the rares upgrading your grays um, upgrading gray items and transferring them over to your stuff to get high level uh, upgrades. Smeltings. You know, that a lot of times you get that done earlier in the game. You get your weapon max smelted. Mod merging. That's where you're trying to get. You want to, you know, most people have level 4 mods. Getting it to level 5 or above is really hard. Um, so your goal is, when you're at 38, you want to try to get all your mods to level 4 and that's in your armor. And then slowly maybe try to get some fives but it starts to get really hard after four you know and that's how it works just doing dungeons salvaging for metal salvaging for retuners changing your rares upgrading your items and that's how the crafting system works i hope you guys enjoyed this video like i said in my first one i was going to make a, a more uh in-depth video on the crafting system and i pretty much explained the whole nitty-gritty um of it right here. I hope you enjoyed the video. This is Daytour, and uh, I'll catch you guys around. If you have any questions, um, because maybe I was talking a bit fast, I'm trying to get the video done as soon as I can. I don't want to make it too long. Any questions you can put in my comments below, and I'll try to answer them as soon as I can. This is Daytour, and you guys have a nice day.